crisis communication protocol evolution of. There it is. You guys are learning right along with us. There uh, we which go. is a great thing because we're sharing the experience. There we go. And we're sharing our knowledge and specifically Pritch's deep, deep, deep knowledge in this space. So again, listen up. Welcome to the Golden Group Strategic Growth Podcast, featuring expert insights, interviews with thought leaders, and business plan triage. Today, we're going to advance the thinking in protocols. Yes. Yeah. More protocol More discussion. protocol. Because more people need it because there are still people very resistant to the ideas of protocols over plan. Absolutely. And it's, it's interesting. I've spent a lot of time researching this and looking for scholars or practitioners who have talked about uh, protocols. And the only article I found was that 1997 article by Jim Lukashevsky. The master himself. The master himself. So that's given me a, a really good, given us a really good foundation, but we want to advance that thinking. For sure. Because I just don't think people get it yet. And a lot of things are changing right now. Technology, society, obviously COVID-19 and health issues. So uh, there's a lot of change happening, but we can still take these great ideas that people have been using for a long time and adapt them to what we're trying to do in 2021 and moving forward. Well, major discussions about disinformation, misinformation, malinformation. I, these principles or protocols, I think, will, will uh, set us up for success. I don't think we're done with this list yet. I agree. But I think it, it advances our thinking okay. for sure. So Jim had 13 principles, protocols right. that he suggested. So I've taken that, looked at the literature again, I've revived you some of the terms. The professor's doing the work for you guys. Pay attention. <laughs> he's doing the work for you. Pay attention to what he's about to say. Well, well, I used some of the terms that Jim used, but I put them in different contexts right. and then added some more. So here we go. There are 11 now. Okay. I think you we combine a couple we, of them. We've combined a few of them right. along the way. We will do more of this. Yes. But this is the opening gambit. In a past podcast, we talked about behind the scenes or the right. evolution of. Uh, well, this is this is the crisis communication protocol evolution of. There it is. You guys are learning right along with us, there uh, we which go. is a great thing because we're sharing the experience. There we go. And we're sharing our knowledge and specifically Pritch's deep, deep, deep knowledge in this space. So again, listen up. Okay. So first is responsibility. I, I, what would you think that should be about? Putting oh, you on the spot. Uh, take, taking ownership of your mistakes when you they're your mistakes. Um, pretty good, but I, I'm focusing this more on the, and so did Jim, more okay. on the victims or the folks that are affected. Our major responsibility is to communicate compassionately, completely, and directly with those most directly affected by our problems as soon as possible. Just talk right to the people most affected. People most affected. Notice media's not in there. Right. On their channel, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it says that we are going to be uh, forthcoming. Yes. Right. And the best way Stonewall. possible. Often is mass media, but isn't always mass media. That's yeah, that's right. Or I a mean, media mix. The media is going to be there. And, and, and I include digital uh, resources sure. in that as well. And in fact, that's an area we really need to pay very close attention Certainly. to. Certainly, That's where the, that's where the speed <clears throat> of inaccuracy is, is a real problem. Uh, yep. And thank you for that segue because responsiveness is the number two. There you go. And that is our response to the media must be timely. The standard is response it is to respond with all available information within one hour. We have told you many times in this podcast, but if this is your first time listening to us, hear this, understand this, write this down. You have an hour to respond publicly to any crisis happening with your business or with, with a business entity, uh, an individual, et cetera. You do not have to respond in five seconds. Nope. And you can't wait five hours. Nope, you can't. You have an hour. So the one hour came out of my experience in the Navy and the 
dictates that in an accident or an incident, we had one hour to move information to higher headquarters. Yes. Made a lot of sense to me. As, as you say, folks are going, but, you know, social media crush you in five seconds. One hour gives you enough time to gather the correct information, keeping you relevant. It also gives you your, your advocates a chance to jump jump in there as the well. The key word was correct information. When you talk too quickly, you don't have enough information. You don't have the full story. You can't, even if you intend to give the best information, you can't because you don't have it yet. This is also when people say, what can we do about all this misinformation in the world? This right here, as practitioners, as professionals, not allowing yourself to panic and get that, I got to get it out because right. six people on Twitter are mad about it, right. but I need to go and find the correct data and get it back to our stakeholders, the people most affected, as soon as I can and in a correct manner. I have probably an hour. That mindset will eliminate a lot of the misinformation that yep. gets out in the world. And actually, I think I just modified that response is timely and accurate. Absolutely. And we need I to, agree with I that completely. That. We, we need to make a note of that. Everyone make write that note. down. Help That's us right. remember we're that. Just, uh, we're doing this we're as, doing it on the as fly. we do We're it. talking through it. <laughs> In our process, you're watching it happen. Okay. So here's the one that I think may seem counterintuitive. It's openness. Okay. Okay. We've talked about yes, openness, but I this is not agree. the openness that we've talked about. Okay. This is not necessarily transparency. Uh, um, telling everything that you can know, you know, and not violate uh, legal or proprietary information. Openness in this case means that if somebody's going to find out about our problem, we're going to get to them first right. and tell them yes. about our problem. That's owning owning your mistakes. That's openness, yes. baby. <laughs> and I think, honestly, I like the idea of talking about openness more than an idea of transparency, because I believe transparency has been reduced to a buzzword. Yep, I agree. I absolutely agree. So openness is talking about voluntarily talking about what we can talk about uh, as completely as we can, especially with those most directly affected. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. I hear Aretha Franklin in the background on this one. Respect. R E S P E C T. <laughs> We will always answer any question any constituent may have and suggest and volunteer additional information in the event they don't ask enough yes. or the right questions. Yes. We, we will respect and seek to work with those who oppose us. Yes, and, and not uh, holding back is very disrespectful. So the counter is... By, by, not, by not trying to be disrespectful, by being respectful, you are not hold back. You will provide what you can, when you can, at the level necessary. And what I like about that particular protocol that I think has long been ignored is that I'm, just because I give you information doesn't mean that that's the stop of the conversation. That's right. You didn't ask. The, if you didn't ask the right question, I'm going to provide that information to you anyway, so you don't have to ask. That's right. Com give as complete of a picture as, as possible because you respect their role as a stakeholder in the process. Cooperation. Cooperation, and, th and in this case, it is with the media. We will cooperate as far as possible and will provide the m maximum allowable access to personnel and the accident incident site there you go this is gonna this is gonna be an argument you're gonna have with your lawyer this is gonna be an <laughs> argument you're gonna have with your ceo and at the end of the day you still gotta listen this to your is, lawyer this is but you gotta argue you for gotta as do. much openness as you can absolutely if you help if you them, don't you'll get none and you're not gonna get any cooperation right. you're not gonna get the benefit of a fruitful relationship. And you might lose in a court of public opinion before you ever get to an actual court of law darn right absolutely right one near and dear, integrity. If we are at fault or there is the perception that we are, we will acknowledge the situation promptly, be empathetic, and explain our mistakes. There you go. Treat people how you would like them to treat you. Right. Or, the, or any misconceptions as quickly as possible. We will be true to our corporate and personal consciences. Yes. It's easy for me to say. It's another thing, too. I see a lot of people get spend a lot of time. I just did a board retreat with a nonprofit group. 
Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about core values and mission statement. Uh, and they had a great mission statement. I was really happy with, with, with what they had and a slight adaption we made because their organization had been changing. But it does no good to be discussed, to be written down, to be committed somewhere in the world if you don't live it every day. You got to walk the walk exactly. if you talk the talk. Exactly. Johnson & Johnson is the paragon of virtuous crisis communication okay. simply because they followed their credo. That's right. They, they pulled right. those poison pills off the shelf when they had to. Well, the other piece of this, and I know you'll jump on this, the other piece of this is our conduct will be morally and ethically correct. I'm a big fan of ethics. Absolutely. That's why we put it into integrity. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Compassion. Compassion is something that your lawyer can argue with but is not going to win because compassion is exhibiting concern, empathy, sympathy, remorse, Contrition, none of that is accepting blame, right? Necessarily in a in a court case, but whatever the case requires, we need to do it with empathy. That's right. At, the end, of, at the end of the day, businesses are run by people. Consumers are people. People have relationships with people through a business transaction. It's people. It's not. It's not the cash. It's not the product. It's not the service. It's the people. So the people in the business in a crisis situation, need to think and act like people being affected by the right. crisis situation. Right. Well, it not only humanizes the organization, which is extremely important, S super it's valuable. the right thing to do. Right. No one ever got mad at someone who did the right thing. Exactly. And if they did, you don't really care about their opinion. There was, there was a problem brewing there anyway, right? Yeah, I almost said something stronger, <laughs> but I, I reeled myself back into uh, being polite with that one. <laughs> Uh, generosity. We'll find a way to go beyond what is expected or require, even to do penance where appropriate. Yeah. And we, we pulled that in when we talked about the apology impulse, right? That's right. Some uh, true apology, when required, includes penance. That's right. You before, take your medicine. Before a request for forgiveness, right? Yes, because your for request for forgiveness will be false and hollow if you're not willing to accept the penance. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, honesty. Sorry. Generosity. We'll find. Oh, no. I, we did that one already. Sorry. Honesty. We will learn from our mistakes, talk publicly about what we've learned, and renew our commitment to keeping errors, mistakes, and problems from reoccurring. I like that. And learning from is a key term there. You bet. Everyone makes mistakes, sometimes small, sometimes big. It happens the process of learning from your mistakes should already be part of every every business and every business development and every leader and, and, and anyone who works in an organization is trying to do better every day is learning from their mistakes. Now, hopefully your mistakes are small. They're little things that you can adapt along the way that are, aren't a major deal. But major mistakes, they're, they're, it's negative. You don't want it to happen. But when it happens, one of a little bit of the silver lining to it, if you will, is a major mistake will reveal major things that can be changed in oh, order right. to avoid that in the future. I think it's really important that we understand people make mistakes. It's what you do with them that matters. Second to last point, words and deeds, mm -hmm. right? Recovering from a crisis has as much to do with the actions as and what and not what we say or how we say it. There you go. Okay, it's actions, it's words. As opposed to deeds. Deeds trump words. That's right. Right? They have to match. You got to see it happen or you don't believe the words that follow it. And I, I added this last point because I think it's really important and one that so many business owners forget. And that is that stakeholders include employees. Absolutely. Right? The internal audience should receive the same level of attention and information as do external audiences. And by that, I mean specifically media. Yes. Your employees shouldn't hear what the company's position <laughs> is through the media. They should hear it from you first. And the harsher the reality or the worse the news is, the more important it is that it is an internal discussion before external. And it's not because we're trying to keep out external, but we need to incorporate our internal people. They need to be part of the process. So you Absolutely. have to communicate. To you them. have to communicate with them. And in my experience, in, in bad news situations, the thing that kills uh, organizations 
is um, not talking about it. Right. People have to guess. That's the worst thing in the world. Because they'll always guess negative. Absolutely. And that's how rumors get started, and rumors will destroy your reputation. These days, they certainly will. Absolutely. So there we go. There's 11. We've still got some work to do on that, but um, I don't know. I I like them. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I like those a lot. Okay. So we definitely want to hear from our fans out there and our detractors. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Agree, disagree. We want to hear from you because it gives us something to talk about on another episode. Especially our critics. I mean, pick this thing apart, folks, okay? Mm -hmm. Because this is how we're going to advance the cause. That's right. Because this is a set in stone. We may change it again Uh, as we hear from you uh, out there in the world. We did. After we started the podcast. That's right. We've we've changed it in the middle of this podcast. In the middle of this podcast. So give us some feedback. We might change it again. Absolutely. (laughs) So don't forget to subscribe, like us, uh, follow us, uh, do all that cool stuff uh, wherever you found uh, this podcast. Until next time, ciao. Good luck. Thank you for listening to the Golden Group Strategic Growth Podcast. Please subscribe so you never miss an episode. Follow the Golden Group on social media. For more information, past episodes, or to contact us, please visit thegoldengroup.com.